Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, before we get started, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So if you can, can you please type yes into the chat box on your screen? Great. Thank you all so much. Um, so again, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining um, on learning more about how to advance your funding strategy with a DevEx business intelligence. Um, I don't know how much you all know about DevEx, um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of background about us. Then we're actually going to jump into a demonstration of the accounts, the types of information you'll have access to, how this can fit into your strategy um, at your organization. Um, if at any point you'll have any questions, please also feel free to type those into the text box. Um, if you have technical issues, we do have some technical support on the call, so they'll be able to help you. Um, or if you have questions about what you see, we'll get to all of those at the end of the call. So just a little bit more information on DevEx. Um, DevEx, we are the media platform for the global development community. Um, we're a social enterprise, and we connect and inform over 850,000 development, health, humanitarian, and sustainability professionals through news, business intelligence, and funding and career opportunities, so you can do more good for more people. Um, so we've had a lot of exciting changes recently to our business development services. Um, so if you're just learning about DevEx or you've been using us for years, I'm going to show you guys all of the new features that we're working on um, and give you a little hint about what else is to come. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, so that way we can actually take a look at the types of information that, that you'll get. Great. So right now we're looking at the DevEx homepage. We are going to focus in underneath this funding tab um, for the, the majority of this call. Um, this is where you're going to find all of the information about the different stages of funding information that we provide. It will all be listed here. So first we're going to come in to this development funding page. And this is where you're going to get access. You'll see all of the different types of information. This is where all of the articles are held. Um, so first I just want to focus in on these four boxes because these are going to correlate with the four main streams of information that we're tracking at four different stages of the funding process. Um, so on the far left, we have our funding activity feed. This is the earliest intelligence that we offer. This is information um, that is going to be before there's a project framework, um, before it's in a, you know everything's official. It's going to be this is pipeline forecasted information that we heard. It's usually quite general at this point, um, but it's great when you're talking about big picture strategy, knowing what's coming down the pipeline, knowing where donors are funneling certain, uh, you know, how much money to different sectors, to different locations, can give you a better understanding as to what the bigger picture is going on currently in development. The next box with the next stage will correlate with our active programs. Um, now, if you're not familiar with our active programs, it's because only some donors will use this stage. Quite frequently, um, it's going to be the development banks. Um, DFID will use it quite a bit. Europe Aid will use it quite a bit. But a program um, is going to be um, it's the stage either before the active tender is released. It can also be um, multiple tenders are coming off of the same program. Um, so it's, it can have you know, some of the funds will already have been distributed, maybe waiting on others to be tendered. Um, but this is where you can see that larger picture as to, um, as to a larger project. From there, we have our active tenders and grants. And those are the open biddable opportunities. Now, we do track and monitor over 350 donors. Um, so it's going to include all of the major bilateral, multilateral organizations. It's going to include development banks, foundations, and we even have some subcontracting opportunities as well. Now, the last stage that we track is going to be our contract awards. And so, of course, these, this is where the project has already been awarded, um, and we will put up that information as to what organization won that, that bid who has been awarded that project. So also within this page, um, you'll have a universal search functionality. 
um, have some access to some great content. So this, this is our section. Um, it's really great about really practical information. So you'll see it's a lot of tips on doing business with USA, with DFAT. Um, you can also see that it's just great about general funding information. Also on this page, you will have more of that really practical information down below in our business center. So again, what's going on in development? What's going on in development funding? Really practical information. A really exciting initiative that our development data team has been taking on recently is to actually do deep dives into that early stage information. So you can see um, we have the under these funding trends. We have a couple showing here. Um, so you can actually see, okay, what does ADB's 2017 to 2019 opportunities look like? And they'll break it down and they'll go more in depth and, and see what sectors, where, what locations. Um, we've done this for USAID as well. Um, down below we have ones for we did AFDB top contractors. And we did a very deep dive into Europe Aid as part of a four-part series um, as to what their funnel is looking like. I actually want to go ahead and show you one of those Europe Aid pieces just so you can get a better understanding as to the types of content that you'll have access to. So this is the one that was specifically looking into Europe Aid's funding priorities in Africa. Um, there is an interactive visualization that goes along with this article, but this article is just going to break down um, showing you, you know, where are these funds going across the continent, um, breaking it down based on the different types of funds um, just as different organizations, in, you know, organizations that are based outside of the EU are able to bid on certain types of funding while not on others. So breaking it down based on that as well. You can see it based on the European Development Fund. So a lot of really great content within here. And as I mentioned, along with this, we also did a visualization tool where it's actually interactive. So you can come in here. Um, you can see up at the top we can break it down based on region. I selected Africa. Um, and you can see that we have it broken down by country over on the left-hand side. Um, also on the right, you can see what it's broken down based on fund. You can see the key down below so you can actually see what, you know, what's coming from the EU Trust Fund, what's coming from the Development Fund. Um, and we've done a lot of work to kind of make, trying to take this information that can be very overwhelming and very difficult to understand in PDF form and making it something that you all can actually use. Um, so say that you all have a large presence in Tanzania. You can come in here and it will refresh this information to show you what is going on in Tanzania. So it's a really great opportunity to, to really dig down into different countries, different sectors. So that is just an example of some of the access to the content that you'll get. I want to come back and start diving into these four stages of information that we track, starting with the funding activity feed because that will correlate as well. So this is where, like I mentioned, it's going to be very early pipeline information. So it's before there is you know, an official project framework, before there is you know, a lot of details, they release you know, these quick blurbs about new funding opportunities. So you can see this one from the African Development Bank here at the top. Um, we know that it's going to Egypt, the range of funds, um, and a couple of sentences and what we were able to find about this this potential opportunity. So you can see there's usually only a couple of sentences per, per entry um, because it is just so early stage that there's just nothing else left to there's nothing else that we that we could find about it. Um, You'll also notice that each one of these entries are tagged with sectors and subsectors at the bottom to make for easy searching. Just because we know that if there's only two sentences to search on, it can sometimes be difficult to find the right keywords. Um, so you can come up here to the top and click the See All Sectors, and then you can easily just search based on the sector that you're interested in. You can also easily narrow this information down based on donor and based on location as well. So 
So great. That is our earliest intelligence on the funding activity feed. The next section that I want to look into is going to be our active programs and our active tenders and grants. So these two middle uh, boxes. So we are actually in the process of consolidating all four streams of information into one easily searchable database. So instead of the four different databases. Um, so we currently have only combined the programs and the tenders and grants. Um, next up will be the funding activity feed that we just looked at, and then the contract awards will also be coming in. So that way you can easily search for a single subject or you know, combination of search terms and see what is going on with that across all of the different stages of development. So hopefully it's an easy way for, again, to just get a really great picture um, based on the different sectors, the different locations, the different donors um, as to how development, what's going on. So you'll see within here, um, so like I said, the programs and the tenders and grants are loaded in. Um, we have about 18,000 between the two open um, or entries within there. So you can really narrow it down just because we know you don't have the time to search through all of those. So you can easily search by keyword. You can add in a, a certain funder that you're looking for. So let's say that I'm looking for water opportunities. Um, and let's say I also want to add in West Africa. Um, now this will pull up every water opportunity within West Africa. Um, I can also, if I wanted to narrow it down even more, I can you know, decide different status, um, different size. So the way that we classify size is small opportunities are under 1 million USD. Medium are between 1 and 5 million USD. And large are 5 million and larger. You can also add in if it's a certain category, or when it was last updated. Now if I wanted to add more filters in, I can also just look at tenders and grants if I wanted to add in a deadline as well. Now what's really nice is that we want to make sure that this fits into your workflow. So if you work exclusively with water opportunities in West Africa, you can actually come in here. You can create alerts um, as you would like. And you can create as many custom alerts as you need. Uh, so I can name this Water in West Africa, and then I can select either a daily or weekly um, alert to be automatically sent to me. And that will include any new opportunities that have been added to the database since the last one. So looking into here, we see that we have 68 results um, over on the left-hand side. Um, what we can do is we can actually toggle that over to expand the size. Now up here at the top there are some really great tools. I especially want to highlight this contact and analyst function. Um, what this is, is if you have questions or need clarification on this opportunity, um, maybe making sure you're eligible for bidding on this, you can actually reach out to DevEx, to our development data team, um, and they will be able to let you know if, you know, answer any questions that you have. Um, if we don't have that answer um, and we can't find it, then we'll actually reach out to the donor itself on your behalf and act as an intermediary between you and the donor. So within this project, you can see that we have all of the key information up here at the top, um, timeline information, the contact for this opportunity. Um, the primary resource, so where we found this information, will be linked under More Resources. Beneath more resources, we have this really great section called Relevant Partners. And this is information that we've aggregated from our contract award database. Um, and I have identified this list of organizations as good potential partners on this project. And that's going to be based off of the, where they've worked in the past, the donors that they've worked with in the past, and the types of projects that they've worked on. So this is a great place to start if you're looking for a partnership, especially if you're a smaller organization that can provide a niche um, sector within a certain project. Um, you can reach out and talk about maybe bidding together. And then over here on, in the center, you will see just all of the information about this opportunity.
And so we have our team, our so that development data team, they're the ones who keep this information you know, up to date. They do have um, someone working 24 hours a day, five days a week. So we're constantly updating everything. We usually see that there's about a two-hour difference from the time that an opportunity or early intelligence or contract awards are posted anywhere until the time that they're added to DevEx. So it's a very fast turnaround. And that is our, our programs and tenders and grants. And you can also see where we're going in the future with adding in these other databases as well to have one easily searchable place that you can find all of the information about development funding. So the last database that I want to focus on is going to be our contract awards, this one on the far right. And our contract awards, so this is where we will show um, what organizations have been awarded which projects. Now, it's not a perfect science. Um, we find, you know, as you all know, I'm sure, um, donors are not always required to disclose who they've awarded their funds to. So oftentimes it can be very difficult um, to find, you know, who they've awarded their funds to. So we'll get this information in two different ways. One is if the donor does release it, of course we will add it to the site. site. Um, also, we have organizations that will reach out and let us know when they've been awarded a new project, um, because that way, again, you know then they have the chance to be pulled into those relevant partner section on the tenders um, and it's more, a more complete profile so people can understand the types of work. Um, this database is great. I really see its use in two main ways. One is it's a great place to do research. So if you're looking to work with a new donor, it's great to come in here and see, all right, what types of projects have they awarded in the past? What types of organizations have they awarded to? So we can get a good understanding of their, their history. Um, it's also a great place for potential partnerships as well. So if you um, Again, you can come in here, you can see the types of projects that have been awarded and who's won them, and reach out if it, you can provide your services. So we're going to have some really easy search functionality within here. You can have the Boolean search terms up at the top. Um, you can search by donor, by location, by awardee. Um, so you can see that we have a little over 125,000 contract awards in here currently, something that we're actively looking to ramp up. Um, so you can see, um, looking at this first one, um, it'll show you know the name of the project, who it was awarded to, who the donor was. You'll also see where it was for. Um, you'll be able to see the date that it was awarded and the date that it was added. Looks like Europe Aid just gave us a whole, just released a whole bunch of, of contract awards, um, and you'll also be able to see how much the project was for. So if we click into this opportunity, again, we'll be able to get any other information that they've released. Um, so a little bit more within here about this award. You'll also see that over here on the right-hand side, we've again cross-listed with our open and forecasted opportunities. So if this had been an opportunity, this, this awarded project, if it had been one that you would have liked to bid on or maybe you did bid and you weren't selected, you can see other similar opportunities that are, again, either the forecast stage or accepting bids. Um, so it's a great way to see other relevant opportunities to bid on. So those are the four main types of information at the four different phases of development funding. Um, also, we took a quick look into the types of content that you'll get access to, a really exciting thing that our, our development data team has been ramping up over the past couple months and will continue to ramp up. Um, so I'd love to go and see if we have any questions about what you all have seen um, and, and answer anything that I can. So great. So I had a question about the early activity feed. Um, it says, do you actively track all of these opportunities through the later stages of your pipeline? So yes, if there is information about anything, it won't be connected. Um, you won't be able to click on one and see it all the way through. But 
if you track and monitor those keywords, if you set those alerts, you'll be notified when that opportunity is released. Um, and so our team, I mean, we track and monitor, like I said, three, over 350 um, or different donors. If you all are interested in seeing that donor coverage, please send me an I'll be reaching out afterwards. Please let me know, and I can send you over a completed list of that donor coverage. Um, so again, I'll be emailing you after this today, hopefully today, maybe tomorrow. Um, so if you are interested in that donor coverage list also, let me know. Um, but you'll see that pretty much for all of those donors, we are tracking it at every single stage of the opportunity. So I had someone asking if, if there was a manual that, um, about instructions about the platform. So we don't have anything uh, like a manual, but you, if you all do decide that this is a good fit for your business, um, you'll actually get an account manager. You'll also have um, our member experience team, and they will set up some time, especially right when you come on, walking you back through setting up those alerts for your, um, for your work. Um, so that way you can really understand and get the full value out of the membership. You all do have this team that's dedicated to making sure that it makes sense for your organization. You, you understand how to utilize it to the best of its abilities. And we always have our support team as well, which are incredible. And again, they are staffed 24 hours a day um, with any immediate questions that you all may have. So any other questions? Well, great. Well, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, like I said, I will be reaching out to you all um, following up either today or tomorrow. So if you have any specific questions or interested in learning more about how this could be a good fit for your organizations, or you want to get a copy of that donor coverage list, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help um, in any way that I can. But thank you all again, and have a wonderful rest of your day.